Hello and welcome to Bread of Life. Our speaker for this week is Pastor Doug Van Veldhuizen of Cromwell. Well, yesterday we talked about the first three things that seem to pop out to us and when we think about the fall of man. And that when Eve was tempted by Satan, who was very crafty, that uh, when she looked at the fruit and saw that it was good for food, that opened the door. And then what she saw began to be pleasing to the eye. And after that, it says that she also, it was desirable for gaining wisdom. You see, that desirable for gaining wisdom wasn't because it looked pleasing, but it was the thoughts, the thoughts that were in the back of her mind that she remembered the words that had been spoken to her by the servant. God knows that you will be like him, knowing good and evil when you eat of it. Your eyes will be opened. She thought her eyes were open when she saw it was good and it was pleasing. Oh, no. Here we find that it says that once she became desirable, that then, and it began to be desirable because of her thoughts. You ever thought about the passage of Scripture that says, take captive every thought? Wow. When's the last time you consciously took captive of all your thoughts? When was the last time that you stopped in the middle of a thought? Maybe your eyes were wandering and you begin to think things you shouldn't think. Greed, lust, who knows? But as they began to wander, did you ever say, whoa, whoa, what am I doing? And begin to take those thoughts in captive. Remember in Philippians it said, that which is good and holy and lovely and righteous and upright, and if there's anything of excellence, dwell on these things. Paul knew exactly what it meant to take captive your mind. How? By changing what you're thinking. He says in Romans chapter 12 that we're supposed to renew our mind. Renew your mind. Why? Because you see, the thought processes is where the things begin to happen and where we begin to go astray. Well, after all, the thought process had suddenly overcome her. Then it moved from just a thought to an action. It says then that, you know what? She took it. She ate it, and she gave some to her husband. Let's look at that for just a moment during this few moments we have. She took it. You see, there's an action that takes place. It was one thing for her to look at it and begin to desire it, and then all of a sudden begin to let her mind dwell upon that thing. But you know what? She then took it. She reached out. Before, she just was looking at it. Now, she entered in and took it. But it wasn't enough that she just took it. Imagine. You have to imagine that, go back into that scene, the serpent is watching all of this happening. And I'm sure he had a big grin on his face because as he looks, it says that she ate it. She took that fruit that was desirable and pleasing and she took a big bite and ate it. You know, it's one thing for us to have sin in our lives, but somehow when we sin, it's not enough for us to sin alone. We want others to join us. We want to take others down that road for numbers of reasons. One, we think that it's a good thing. We think that it's okay, and if we're enjoying it, others should enjoy it. Two, we feel guilt and shame, and if we feel it, we don't want to be the only ones. Boy, if I can have other people doing exactly what I'm doing, well, I don't feel as bad. Well, everybody else is doing it. It's not the issue. We will all stand before God as one, individual. And we will make an accounting to him of what we have done. And so upon eating it, it says that she gave it to her husband. Isn't that interesting? Once we have entered and stepped over that line and begun to do the things that we shouldn't do, the enemy just seems to take over and we begin to look for other ways that others can join us. We invite them. We become just like the serpent. We're not much different in some ways because what we end up doing is saying, hey, take. But thank God, they, when they partook, they didn't end up in death. God had a plan. We'll look at that the next day. You've been listening to Pastor Doug Van Veldhuizen of Cromwell, and this has been Bread of Life, a program to encourage you from God's Word.